everyone. I wanted to welcome you into my office here where I have the YouTube studios. Uh, I've just finished moving and I'm still kind of in the process of undoing a lot of the boxes, but thus far I've been able to set up my office here. So what you're seeing behind me is going to be, well, I have an armor set, I have miniatures, I have books and games. So uh, this is like a little mini library that I've been putting together and I wanted to share it with you because I've been asking or receiving a lot of requests from you all about, you know, book recommendations or particular follow-ups on documentaries. Uh, so what I'm doing today is just giving you a taste of that, going kind of shelf by shelf, explain to you why I have certain books or which ones I would recommend of that shelf, and just give you a, a sense of kind of my, my tastes here, and I'm sure a lot of you are going to share uh, similar interests, and maybe I'll, I'll send you down the rabbit hole on a certain topic. So today, we'll be just sampling here and there. Uh, and then hopefully if we get enough good feedback, what I could do in the future is maybe bring you back in for another session, <laughs> another video. And what I could do is just maybe pull off one or two books from the library and just talk a bit more in depth about that one. Maybe start doing some book reviews or magazine recommendations, maybe even some board games. We have a fair amount that we've been playtesting with friends. Uh, so yeah, let's, uh, let's get, get it started. All right, let's go ahead and move on closer to the set. I'm going to start off with our centerpiece here, which is going to be uh, two shoulder pads of the Lorga Segmentata and then a kind of Gallic style uh, Imperial Roman helmet with the crest looking awesome. I've been getting bits and pieces of this over Christmas from various family members, so I still have more sets of the armor, uh, like the, uh, the chest piece, it just doesn't fit right here. Uh, but I think nonetheless this looks really nice as a centerpiece. And then in the center I do have a bunch of painted miniatures. Then, like I said, on the left, it's mostly going to be uh, classical antiquity, some Greek and Roman history, a lot of Roman stuff. And on the right-hand side, you have a bit more of uh, kind of the rest of history as I start to dive into it, and then some fantasy and some games. Uh, so let's dive into this first. I'm going to start off with some of the models here. I did want to show them off. Uh, now, this is a bit blasphemous, but I am not actually the one who painted these. I bought them pre-painted off of uh, Craigslist. And the reason I did that is because these were initially intended to be used as giveaways. So I did have a lot more models than this originally. Uh, a lot of them did make it into the hands of subscribers uh, as I was doing charity giveaways. I didn't get to give them all away. Uh, so I'm holding on to them partially because I think they're freaking awesome. So I do want to hold on to some of these. But I'll try and look for opportunities to maybe give more of these away because uh, they are fantastic. Down here you can see some cool dwarf warriors. Used to have a bunch of thunders and cannons. Uh, this awesome warrior priest. Uh, if we go down even further, there's badass black orcs on these corkscrew bases. We get to see some warriors of chaos with like in the snow, with blood all over. Most of these were given off as prizes, but I still have a couple left over. Champion there, some more dudes in the back, and a terror geist there in the snow. I do have another one up here that I really kind of want to hold on to because it just looks so awesome. So there you have a terror geist perched atop this uh, a graveyard setup. This is fantastic. I used to paint miniatures myself, uh, but that was back in the day, um, and yeah, I did not have the patience to do this much detailing. So all this is super impressive, uh, and like I said, I'm eager to have it here just as a, a little set uh, to look at, but yeah, I'll be trying to find ways to give it out. Last little bit in the center here is actually going to be some of our stuff left over from the last D&D session we had. So these are going to be various representations of characters we had in the game. These are all different uh, players. This was my guy. He was an orc with a taste for art. Uh, and then we have a couple other people who could turn into a, a bear, some sadistic little uh, dwarfs, etc. So it was very, very fun. Uh, maybe I'll be able to share that in another video. But uh, moving on up over here, what we can do is start with the first shelf, uh, which does kind of start with the earliest period of classical antiquity, starting with, well, I mean, you have to start with Herodotus, the histories. And then moving on into the rise of Athens, getting into the Spartans, and then breaking into Alexander the Great. So I'm going to stop on this shelf and give you a couple recommendations. I'm sure Alexander the Great is a topic that you guys all love. Uh, same thing with the Spartans in Athens, but for me this uh, row, my favorite set is going to be the stuff on Alexander. The campaigns of Alexander is going to be, well, the translated version written by Arian, who is a Roman consul, I believe. So this is going to be like your authentic one. Um, so it comes with a translation, tons of annotations on it. So if you want to get kind of the, the raw source on Alexander, this is a good one to start with. But it's a bit heavy, lots of text going on. This one here, Alexander the Great by Philip Freeman, is kind of like your, you know, a, a source that compiles a bunch of different information, archaeology, etc. And then it presents 
the Alexander narrative in a much more condensed format. So I really like this one. So I recommend that. And then finally, if you want kind of a twist on things, this book, uh, In the Footsteps of Alexander the Great, is really awesome. Uh, the twist on this is that it doesn't quite tell the tale of Alexander in the sense of his campaigns, but what it does is, as the title says, In the Footsteps of Alexander. So it's basically um, a book that talks about a group of individuals, a group of explorers who started off in Macedonia and then followed the footsteps of Alexander, took pictures along the way, uh, of places that we know that he went, talked to the locals, wrote down their you know oral histories of Alexander that were left over. They noted you know what was the terrain like, so you get a boots on the ground impression of what Alexander's campaigns may have been like. So I would definitely recommend this just for that kind of extra realism of it. So that one was really cool. Uh, next, moving on is going to be you know we pivot into Roman history. So I have the rise of Rome. The Fall of Carthage, Ghosts of Cannae, The Poison King, um, which is about Mithridates, Spartacus War, Caesar, and then we start to get into these. This is the the Conquest of Gauls by Julius Caesar, a book on Cicero, Antony and Cleopatra. So again, we'll stop on this row and I'll give my recommendations. Um, well, we'll start from left to right. This is it's got some of my favorite books. So I will say that The Rise of Rome is really good because oftentimes when you learn about Roman history, it's much later. It's like from Caesar on. Um, so The Rise of Rome is great by Anthony Everett. It focuses a lot on the early history, starting from around 753 or earlier, and going on into how Rome finally went to claim uh, Italy. So that is awesome. It's a lot of information that you don't typically get. If you're interested in the Punic Wars, you cannot go wrong with this one. It's by Adrian Goldsworthy, which is already awesome. Goes into a lot of detail, pretty thick, and it covers the three wars with Carthage. So I definitely recommend that one. If the Battle of Cannae is something that interests you, then I would definitely pick up this book, The Ghosts of Cannae. This one is particularly interesting if you've already kind of gotten used to the Punic Wars. This one, what it does is it follows basically um, the soldiers who were at Cannae, uh, the units that were shamed in the defeat, and then it follows them when they were then positioned in Sicily, and then later were recruited by uh, Scipio and brought the war to Carthage. So it's kind of like the redemption story of those soldiers. It goes into a lot of depth on those specific individuals, what their experience was like in the war. So whereas the other ones are more so about, you know, here's what happened from a more, you know, top down approach. This one gets you down into the thick of things and it's a different narrative. And I really, really like this one. This is one of my main sources that I use for my documentary on um, the Battle of Cannae. Uh, this one, The Poison King, I also highly recommend. It's about Mithridates. Uh, really, really great stuff. Um, it did win some awards by Adrian Mayer. Uh, now, it's not entirely historical in the sense that a lot of information is kind of bits and pieces that have been strung together to form a narrative. Um, and that's how come it's been so uh, fleshed out and so thick, even though our information maybe is a little bit scant. Uh, but nonetheless, it does a great job of fleshing out his life and positing plausible um, you know, historical events in between the kind of the known uh, bullet points. So this is great. I'll be using it for future documentaries. If you're at all interested in gladiators or if you've seen the series Spartacus, definitely pick this one up at Barry Strauss. It's on the Spartacus War. Covers all of it from start to finish or the revolt, I should say, the Third Servile War. Uh, so that one's great. This is perhaps my favorite in this entire column. There's a lot of contenders, but Caesar uh, Life of a Colossus is perhaps one of my favorites. It's again by Adrian Goldsworthy, very prolific writer, uh, still writing today. He covers a lot of stuff on Roman history and just look how thick this book is. Uh, so if you're at all interested in Caesar, Caesar or his campaigns, this is my go-to source for it. It is amazing. And then of course, if you want a bit more primary material, you can pick up The Conquest of Gaul by Julius Caesar himself. Uh, this book here on Cicero, I haven't gotten around to reading yet, but I do know that Anthony Everett's a great writer. Um, he was the one that we had early up here for Athens, so I do intend to get back to this one. Cicero is an interesting character that I'll want to revisit. This one as well by Adrian Goldsworthy does explore kind of another kind of uh, similar time period to Caesar. This is one that focuses well obviously on Antony and Cleopatra, uh, a story that you see a lot in media but you don't get much of the history of it, the real history of it, and this one is freaking awesome so I definitely recommend that one, but for me Caesar is a must-have. Uh, moving down into the next row, this is going to be once we move into the well, Roman Empire. So you have uh, this one here, which covers the rise of Augustus and his life. Pax Romana, against, again, by Adrian Goldsworthy. So it covers kind of the Roman world of the empire, how it went about its activities. And it doesn't necessarily focus too much on campaigns, 
but mostly how Rome carried out its war, peace, and conquest. Uh, so that was interesting. It's a slightly different narrative than your traditional kind of focus on campaigns and battles. Uh, and then over here I have a series, so Rome's wars in Parthia's, uh, in Parthia, Palmyra, and kind of the breaking up of the empire. So this is later uh, Roman Empire. You get some stuff on Constantine, on Hadrian. I have not read the memoirs of Hadrian, uh, but I would love to. I hear there's a lot of great stuff in there. Uh, and then if you're interested in kind of the late Roman Empire, again, Adrian Goldsworthy does pop up. His book, How Rome Fell, again, you can see just how thick it is, does a great job of fleshing that out. So I can't recommend that one enough. Uh, these two as well, I've kind of stuck here in the library in the sense that they kind of span the two periods. Uh, Ancient Rome by Simon Baker here does give you a good overview of kind of Roman history from start to finish in a relatively condensed fashion, as much as you can condense, you know, thousands of years. And then this one, SPQR by Mary Beer that came out, I believe not too long ago, is great in that it also covers Roman history, but interspersed within it, you get a lot of kind of personal tales and boots on the ground perspective. So this one, I recommend if you want an overview of Roman history uh, with some more like tangible examples. Now the next one down here is where we start to get into, you know, the aficionados of the Roman Legion. Uh, so let me take a knee real quick. So down here you can see a series of books. Um, where to begin with this one? Well, over on the left, I guess, The Legions of Rome by uh, Stefan Dando Collins. This one is great. What it does essentially is basically it covers all of Rome's legions. Uh, well, first it has like a pretty thick introduction on the Roman army. It gives you lots of details. And then after that, what it does is it catalogs each of Rome's legions tells their story, what was their insignia, where were they formed, what were their major accomplishments, what were they known for, stuff like that. And then it also has another thick piece at the end where it covers uh, Roman battles in detail. Uh, some more stuff here, a book on Roman military equipment. That one's interesting if you want to do reenactment, that one might be handy. Then you have two books over here, again by Adrian Goldsworthy. You have The Complete Roman Army and The Roman Army. So relatively similar. I don't quite know why he came back and did one or the other. Um, but, uh, oh wait, maybe this one isn't, okay, yeah, this is a, a different author. So the one in the back here uh, is Adrian Goldsworthy, so I'd recommend that one, but this one also covers very similar time period. Um, yeah, a lot of great information in those two. Of this entire row, I would say, um, definitely pick up one of these two, and then definitely pick up Uniforms of the Roman World. Essentially what this does is it gives you a sense of what everything looked like. It's got history interspersed in there, but it tells you, you know, what did different people, centurions, legates, uh, auxiliary, uh, cavalrymen, archers, etc., what did they all look like, as well as Rome's enemies. So this one is great for giving you a sense of the visuals of the period. Uh, over here we have some more stuff. So this one is interesting. I've just started reading it, Man and Wound in the Ancient World. So it's about, well, military medicine. So we'll be covering that in a future moments episode. And then we have this one. Uh, logistics of the Roman army. This is what I've been founding a lot of the stuff I did recently on Roman logistics and meal preparation. It's a great book, although it is kind of pricey. I think it comes out at 80 to 100 bucks because it's a bit more of like a scholarly book, uh, but it is freaking awesome. Uh, a bit dense in terms of the topic, but really well laid out, very well researched. Uh, so I really appreciate that one. Uh, legionary. Uh, a Roman soldier's manual is pretty awesome. It covers kind of the day-to-day -day life of a Roman army. It doesn't give you too much depth, but it makes it very accessible. It has a fair amount of pictures, um, good information all around on training, etc., uh, artillery pieces and all of that. So this is a good cheap buy that will fill you in on kind of what it's like to be a Roman soldier. Recommend that one. Moving on, we got a couple more. Uh, so these are going into more depth on like Caesar's Legion, the Roman Triumph, and then this one, Soldiers and Ghosts is pretty good. It's like an analysis of uh, battles and warfare in classical antiquity. So it covers not only the Romans, but the Greeks and others. Pretty good, answers a lot of questions that you may have on kind of the transition between different technologies. Uh, over here, again, some more Goldsworthy. Roman army specifically at war 100 BC to 280. This one's really good in the sense that it has basically Roman warfare from various perspectives. So basically, uh, it'll be hard for me to flip through here, but it'll tell you, you know, what is the, like for instance here, the, the header is the general's battle. So it tells you going into battle, here's everything a general would do. And then after that it has, you know, how would a unit perform in the battle, and then later on it has like the soldiers battle, so you get all the different perspectives. So if you're interested in kind of the nuts and bolts of Roman warfare, definitely recommend this one. Uh, now this next one may be my favorite of all of these, despite all of these being awesome. 
Uh, In the Name of Rome is awesome. Again, an Adrian Goldsworthy production. This one, what it does is it basically focuses on all of Rome's generals throughout its history. Uh, And what it does is it talks about what did that general do? How did it change the Roman army? How did it use that army? Um, And it basically gives you a sense of, you know, the Roman army was a tool, but you do have to have someone that wields it. And this is a great book that talks about how all the generals wielded it differently. So the, the chapters on Scipio, on Pompey, and all that really give you an idea of what it means to be a good commander. The, the nitty gritty, the things you do, of instilling discipline, training, all kinds of stuff like that. This is an awesome book. Again, it gives you a little bit of a, a differentiation from your standard focus on battles. Um, so yeah, I would recommend that one. Uh, next row down here, books that I'm gonna be giving away. Uh, the Storm Before the Storm, a Mike Duncan production. So he's the guy who did the History of Rome podcast. He produced his own book. I'm about halfway through, but I definitely recommend it. I have a couple extra copies that I'll be using to give out. But basically, this one is great in the sense that it drops you off just before Caesar's generation, and it shows the, the kind of beginning of the unraveling of the Republic. So this is a very interesting time period because most of the time, when you talk about the end of the Republic, they're going to be talking about uh, you know, Caesar crossing the Rubicon, but you have to lay the groundwork first. And that's what this book covers. And it really clears up that period a lot. So I really enjoy that one. This one on Hannibal. Again, I've got a series of them that I'll be giving away in the future. Uh, Osprey publishing here, a ton of different magazines on various topics, uh, not magazines. They're like just short books, but Osprey publishing is great. If you have a topic you're interested, I recommend them hundred percent. Uh, it's always worth every cent, uh, great images and artwork in there. Uh, Lastly over here what we have is going to be some stuff that's more on like everyday Roman life. So I have two ones here. uh, A source handbook in Roman social history. So basically if I can pop this one out real quick. Basically what it does is it's a compilation of uh, topics on various things. So there we saw the provinces, dinner parties. So it'll have a topic and then what it does is it just takes all of our references and it says basically you know here's about dinner parties and then it will quote you you know this is from this particular source and here's what they said as well as accompanying description so it really gives you kind of all the primary sources arranged in different categories very very awesome so you get to hear the romans speaking to us etc so i recommend that one uh it is a little bit um devoid of context in the sense that they just kind of dump all the quotes on you so if you want a bit more context, this one, Life in Ancient Rome, is perhaps a little better in the sense that it gives you a bit more description. It's not just primary sources, but you get a bit more um, context. So yeah, uh, if this is the thing that interests you, uh, I would start with this one first, and then maybe this one is like a follow-up for more, uh, more material. Uh, and then down here, two very important books, uh, not necessarily directly tied to Roman history, but these are very important in terms of like military history. Uh, So these are going to be two books by John Keegan. So he is known for essentially, uh, in a sense, revolutionizing how we take a look at battle a lot, and especially with his book, The Face of Battle, where what he does is a study of Agincourt, Waterloo, and the Somme. And so what he does is basically before him, a lot of military history focused on battles as descriptions from a map. Squares moving around, very depersonalized. And what he does in this book is describe the Battle of Agincourt essentially from a point of view perspective. What did it look like as a soldier shambled forward? What did a cavalry charge feel like as it came at you? Uh, Waterloo, all sorts of stuff like this. So he kind of revolutionized the way we told the story of battles, injected the human element, and this is something that has really inspired a lot of people and changed the way we look at uh, military history. So I definitely recommend this one for kind of that eye-opening experience. I definitely enjoyed it. Uh, Down here we have the little YouTube plaque and uh, no admittance except on party business. Uh, but let's get back up and pivot over to the other side here where it's a bit more of an assortment of various books. So up top I have some stuff on Leonardo da Vinci, various things on here. This is an interesting topic actually, uh, The First Fossil Hunters. It's about archaeology way, way in the past, the Greeks and the Romans, what happened when they ran into dinosaur bones. Uh, this one, World War II, this one is a kind of a historical fiction from uh, Harry Sidebottom. I love the Warrior of Rome series, so I can recommend that one. We have Vikings, Alexander the Great, Medieval Europe, and then over here, some stuff on uh, the House of Wisdom. Uh, Two different books on kind of the Islamic Golden Age, so I am making my way through these. I do intend to make documentaries on this time period, so stay tuned for that. Next one over, this is actually gonna be a uh, a soon to arrive moments episode on the rise of the Aztecs, and we'll be doing more topics. So I bought a whole series of books on this. 
History of the Conquest of Mexico, various ones from Osprey Publishing on uh, warriors of the Aztecs, the, the Mixtecs, and others, the fall of Tenochtitlan, uh, various ones on the Aztecs, and this one specifically on the conquistadors. Of all of these, which one would I recommend? Well, obviously, uh, pick the Osprey one that you like the most. These are fairly cheap and give you a great sense of what's going on. But if you want to dive a little bit deeper, this one over here, uh, Life in the Aztec World is a phenomenal book. Uh, essentially what it does is it covers a whole plethora of topics. Let me see if I can do this one-handed. Um, military expansion, so it gives you early history, tons of maps, and then it has gods. It talks about uh, their mythology, it talks about cooking, dining, uh, social structures. It gives you everything, their math, their industry, agriculture, uh, yeah, the conquest, all kinds of stuff. So this one, if you can afford it, is a great pickup for kind of an all-encompassing look at the Aztecs. So that would be my recommendation. Uh, moving down here, I'm starting to get into some Chinese history with the next Total War coming out, which is Romance of the Three Kingdoms. So I did pick up a big old book that I've started to read by John Kay uh, here on just the history of China. So starting from the very beginnings, going up until kind of modern times. So this is a great read just for generalized context. Of course, you have some more Osprey magazine books in the back. And then what I've started to do here also is start reading The Romance of the Three Kingdoms. Uh, here is book one. Let's see where I'm at. Uh, I think I have like a bookmark up over here. So I'm making my way through this, but it is a long uh, set of books, but very, very entertaining and very, very fun. So you got that going on. Uh, next, what do we have down here? Well, some more stuff. This is where we start to get into the non-history related content. So uh, two books on Game of Thrones, The Lands of Ice and Fire is a series of big maps on various places around, uh, well, the Game of Thrones uh, areas. And then this one, The World of Ice and Fire, let me pop this one out and I can show you what's in here real quick. Basically, it just gives you all the lore, um, early history, tons of stuff down here, um, chronology of the various Targaryens, the various people, the houses. This is really great if you're into this kind of stuff. And it's beautifully um, illustrated. So you have those two. Put this back. Um, over here, this is going to be pretty interesting. I did pick up these various books just because I thought they were kind of an interesting idea. And it's about uh, warfare on various fantasy uh, characters. So dwarf warfare, elf warfare, and orc warfare. And it's not particularly tied to any uh, specific world. It's like orcs in general. Essentially what the author tries to do is write about if orcs were real, what would be their tactics? So talking about uh, recruitment, uh, management, different types of troops, scouting, uh, battle tactics, and all this stuff. So it's really, really interesting. Um, I, I found it really cool if you like this kind of stuff. So definitely pick these up. They're relatively cheap uh, by Chris uh, Pramas. And then here, another one awesome. If you're into The Lord of the Rings, I uh, definitely recommend this one. The Atlas of Middle-Earth by Karen Wynne Fonstad. This is one of the ones that's like the go-to one for exploring Middle-Earth in the sense that it has so much history, tons of maps in super high detail, explanations about every place, very, you know, this is going to be Helm's Deep, the caves behind it, all kinds of crazy stuff, chronologies. Here it has literally like every campsite. Look at this. Date night of the campsite, day of the campsite, path with mileage. I mean, this is as in-depth as you could go. So if you're a big fan of Lord of the Rings, I would recommend this one as well. It's got even stuff about the climates and the languages, um, all kinds of stuff on uh, characters. It's insane. Uh, then we have some stuff here about Zelda, various encyclopedias as they come out. And then over here at the bottom, we have a bit of our books. So, um, I'm sorry, not books, this is our games. Of all of these, go to, I would recommend Catan. That's just fun for everyone. If you like stuff that's maybe a little bit more intense, I would recommend Scythe. It does take a long time to learn, but once you're into it, it's very, very dynamic. And think of it like Catan meets Risk. Uh, so I recommend Scythe. I haven't played Blood Rage just yet. It's something I want to get into. Uh, we have some Carcassonne as well, which is fun. Seven Wonders, Pandemic, definitely fun to play. Uh, and over here, these two games, I would recommend to anyone who has like a group of friends that it's easy enough to pick up on. One Night Ultimate Werewolf is basically like Mafia with different roles. Very highly recommend this one to anyone, even if you're not super into uh, board games or card games. This one is just the bomb. Very easy to pick up, tons of fun. 
Uh, and then coup here, which is going to be a game of deception between you and your friends, but the rounds are very, very quick. It's a very psychological game, and uh, I love it. So that is it for the recap. And uh, yeah, we were fairly thorough, I would say, but uh, I hope you appreciated it. All right, thank you everyone for staying tuned thus far. I hope you enjoyed this quick look at kind of what's been in my mini library. I'm sure we have a lot of shared interests, uh, but definitely go ahead and check out the description below where I'll be listing some of my recommended books and games. Uh, and then also I look forward to reading your feedback in the comment section below about, you know, maybe you have further recommendations that I could add to my library. Or if you like this type of content, if you think I should be doing more of it, um, I am all ears. So definitely post down below and I will see you there. So see you in the next one. Bye-bye.